I am Radhika Sakarle in conversation with Mr. Pramod, who is uh, who is the co-founder of Ice Global, uh, a industry which works over specifically over creating experiential design and event management. We hearty welcome you, sir. Thank you very much, Radhika. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so, sir, as we as young, uh, you know, we as uh, designers, there is always experiential design is like with time has evolved. Everybody is everybody knows about design, but still, many people still now don't have a clear knowledge about uh, experiential design. So, uh, how did you? What what made you influence to choose that as a career option during that time? And uh, you know, how is your journey going so far? That's a very interesting question, Radhika. So, and I may sound very very old over here, but when I was very young, and I would be around your age, I hadn't a clue of what I should be doing and what should my career be, right? We had our regular um, academics, we had commerce and science and humanities, we call them arts in those days. If you were brilliant, you'd go to, into medical or engineering. But after completing my graduation, I was pretty much unclear on what my career should be, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it took me some time to figure out where I'm heading with this. So like many of you, and perhaps you guys are maybe more advanced than I, I, I was in those days because there is so much more exposure now, right? The idea of creating experiences at that point of time did not exist. We focused completely on doing events, which is all about stage, sound, lights, and decor. Today, the word is so common that everyone drops a bomb saying experiential design, experiences, and so on. But there is a difference between the two. So when I began my career, I was very clear that while I was in the event business, it wasn't about how big the set is going to be, how fantastic the music and the sound is going to be, you know, what great lighting we have, as much as what's in it for the audience. As a visitor, as a visitor uh, to an event, as an attendee, as an audience, what do you experience? And what each one experiences is very, very personal. It's not about how great the lighting is, as much as how do I feel at an event. So if you're doing, for example, a very exclusive event, and you've got an H&I customer coming in, it's about what he feels, how is he being taken care of, how is he, be, he or she being handled, how the food tasted for him, right? So the experience is very personal. And experiential design is all about understanding who the audience is and how do they receive that design? How do they experience that moment, right? Now, here's one thing I must tell you. In today's day and age, everybody, and I mean everybody without exception, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, is a creator. We are all dreamers. We are all creators, right? We are all part of experiences. We are all creating experiences. It could be a birthday party at home. It could be a wedding. It could be somebody who's passed you in the family and are arranging things for people who are coming in there. We are all the time creating, right? With telephony being so great today and cameras being so high end, everyone's creating videos, right? 28 megapixels, 48 megapixels is so common today because everyone is a creator and companies understand that people are creating content, putting content out over there. So today's journey is very unlike what it was 20, 30 years ago, right? At that time, it was pretty much new ground. We are crafting out a new space. These were words that no one understood. Today, the words are being dropped, yes, partially misunderstood, Radhika. Mm. But the fact is, everyone's a creator, mm. right? So I would say to people today, saying that knowing that we are all dreamers, knowing that we are all creators, the question is, what do you want to put out there? Mm. What is the story you want to tell? Just because, for example, a person is in finance doesn't mean the person is not a creator. Finance is a story, mm. right? Marketing is a story. Anyone in HR, in industrial relation, is a story. We are all communicating. So the journey of experiential design has started many, many centuries ago, mm. right? It began around campfires and people dancing around telling stories. It began with puppet shows. Mm. That are all creating experiences. Today, for example, if you go to Wimbledon, in England. The experience is not just a game. It's about yeah. eating strawberries and cream. Yeah. It's a done thing, right? Mm. Today, if you go for a large event, it's about the cuisine, it's about the smell, it's about the music. <coughs> so experiential design is built into all of us. But if you choose this as a career, mm. if you choose as a career, one has to know that these are very large fields today. So one decides and says, yes, I want to be an experiential creator in the field of sports. For example, now in the field of sports, 
what are you doing is very different compared to what you do for a luxury brand. Yeah. Both are experiences, both are creators, both are evolving. Mm -hmm. But the depth comes from the passion one has. So if you like, for example, cricket, and I mean really like cricket, then you become a creator of experiences in that space. If you like the luxury and the pomp and drama of weddings, right from the bidai and people crying to the whole, you know, Sangeet's happening over there, then the idea is you get into that space and explore that space. So it's about choice. But don't make a choice on the basis of what people are telling you. Make the choice on the basis of what you are feeling inside. So while coming over here to the campus on the way here, one of the students asked me, should I be a, a generalist or a specialist? Right? In this whole sense of creating design, as a student today, what's the future? Should you be a generalist or should you be a specialist? And I've heard, I've heard this question so many times. And there is no good answer to this. There's no one answer fits all. You can be in the medical field, a GP, or you can be a specialist, like a gastro specialist or a heart surgeon. Mm. What is the difference? Both are treating patients. But one does one thing and does it extremely well but you'll never experience the joy of meeting different kinds of people, right? If you're a GP, you meet different people, different cases. So if your heart sings the songs of variety and you want kabhi ye, kabhi wo, then you be a generalist. There is joy in it, there is money in it. But if you feel that nah, I, this is one thing I want to do, like I want to do only sports or I want to do only weddings, then that is exactly what you should do. So the passion that you have, turn that into a career. So, uh, I mean, we, most of the designer, like we are UX designer, we highly relate to the point where you said that, do, like, go for it, just try to understand what you want, follow your passion, you know, channel your, like, channel your, like, passion into a proper agenda. Right. Uh, so, adding to that question, uh, how can experiential design, or what, like, what are the key features of experiential design? Can, uh, you know, if we put up in the market, would broaden the business landscape or like us as young designers or us as young entrepreneurs, how can experience some key features that will help us to be a, a little more established if we go into that business landscape? So that's a very good question again. See, now since I spoke about the fact that everyone's a creator, mm -hmm. right? Today you go online and there is tons of content available. So what is the differentiator? What really makes you stand out compared to somebody else? And there are really two things. One is, what is the story that you are telling? What is your story? It comes from your life, from your experiences, how well you are read, how well you are traveled. What is your story, right? And the second part is how well you sell the story, right? It's not important that you have to speak the language English very well. Your story could be in Bhojpuri. It's perfectly good. It could be in Malayalam. It's perfectly okay. The language is not the barrier. The barrier are two. One is, how well do you relate to the story? What is your story? Because there will be a lot of people out there who want to hear that story because they resonate with it. Hmm. So what's the story? And the second is, how will you sell that story? So at the end of the day, whether it's a movie or a music video or a singer, hmm. the talent is immense. But the ones who really make it are the ones who sell the story best. So as a creator, it's important to learn the art of selling that story. Yeah. Find that nugget, that pivot, that really makes it a differentiator and let that speak, right? Mm -hmm. and, and make no mistake, the work does not sell itself. A lot of people say that work will speak for itself. Mm -hmm. The work does not sell itself. There's simply too much noise and clutter. So learn the art of selling the story. Learn the art of getting people involved in your story, find the communication pegs, find the nuggets of information, find the uniqueness in, 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 in that story and learn to sell it. And that's the explosion point. Uh, we, we have, like, as you said, like, like the, as you said, that storytelling is the pivot, like, plays a very pivotal role in any business or even in creating small change in the whole environment around you only. Uh, so, how this, like, we all talk about storytelling, we have to do it, but how can that theoretical knowledge or like, how can that be like translate into a better way that how can we make it more fruitful as, for us? Just like many people, like it can, ha it might happen that some people just uh, 
just they say from their own experience there there is this part of empathy and all so there is always a gap so how can that gap be covered or in the whole storytelling part okay so you know this is this is a much deeper question than you're asking mm-hmm. right because there is so much happening out today and there are so many platforms right and the platforms have democratized the whole concept of telling a story earlier on 10 years ago you had to be a star to come on television be on radio to be invited to speak today everyone can post content right and then there are hazard stories out over there mm-hmm. there are people saying it differently someone is rapping someone is singing someone's acting someone's doing a dance in a garden there's so much happening out over there i think i think the audience today who's consuming content who's listening to stories is not a fool mm-hmm. right all people think you can pass by and create some content put it out over there the algorithm will kind of create it sure some extent the algorithm does work but the magic lies in authenticity if you're not feeling it and your stories are not authentic it will not sell the audience understands the depth so the authenticity of the creator of that experience is very very important right mm. for example let's say i'm fantastic in doing weddings i understand every moment every nuance every ritual i'm brilliant at it mm. and someone says pramod why don't you for example create this fantastic ipl kind of a match and i'm not a sports person for example mm. i can try there's no depth i have to do my ground work i'll find 10 people who kind of do the entire activity for me and so on it will never be a success because it's not my story hmm. so authenticity is absolutely key in creating experiences so for anyone who's looking at creating experiences and i believe everyone's a creator right if you're taking this up as a career if this is what you want to be doing for the rest of your life if this is what will put food on the table for you and your family for the next 30 40 years it's very very important that you are authentic to what you are creating and that becomes a differentiator because if it's authentic to you you will find the nuggets you will tell the story you will sell the story if not it will always be somebody else's passion that you are telling about it's a, the, the difference is the difference is knowledge which you can get from the books and videos these are the experience If you're authentic, it becomes your experience. Hmm. If it's not authentic, then you are sitting and learning from a knowledge from a book or whatever else and trying to vomit it out. Hmm. Right? I'm not saying don't study. Don't get me wrong. Hmm. Okay, I'm not saying don't study. I'm saying learn the craft. Hmm. There is a craft in it. There's science to it. But the art part of it, hmm. the two parts, artistic and there's a science. Hmm. The art part of it has got to be authentic. So as it's a really deep question like it's a well said question because uh, we do research we do sometimes because we need to create some products and we do some researches so there is also a part that we think that our product is not uh, you know helping that kind of user base sometimes so now that point we'll keep that in mind uh, just to sum it up with uh, one question that how these events like one of this event like bdf uh, bhopal design fest how that how does this bridge a gap between or like between the industry and the academic you know and how it stands relevant to it so i think i think uh, what jlu has done is really uh, has made design extremely relevant to the country today okay i remember and i'm 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 taking a step back for a few years ago pre covid okay and design and designing of experiences was, was really the domain of the elite and the exclusive mm-hmm. we would do tremendous amount of exquisite experiences for brands like mercedes or rolls royce i have taken conferences of special design to helsinki in december when it's really very cold when the finns mm-hmm. are leaving finland to get out because it's so cold i took a country from india and went into helsinki mm-hmm. because the concept was get out of your comfort zone right and we've taken uh, experiential concepts of events down to milan and we've done walking tours museum tours living museum tours and discussions because we wanted companies to understand that there is a design concept behind the product mm-hmm. so in the words of anand mahendra for example and his question to me at that point of time was how do we how do we get the ceos and the c suites of companies to understand that you cannot really own a product anymore a car is a product mm. a generator is a product 
A finance solution is a product. A product can be commoditized at any point of time. Today we sell at one price, tomorrow some company will come at a lower price, it's a product. So the only thing that you can really own is the customer experience. The last mile delivery is the customer experience and hence you see a flurry of activity happening with the Amazons and the, and the Flipkarts in the month because the last mile delivery is on those platforms, right? So what you really own is going to be the customer experience. And this is where we took his top 100 people and went to Milan to open people's minds out of the fact that you have to design an experience. Mm -hmm. So design isn't about the product, it's about the experience. experience. Yes, sir. So it was a really insightful session for us and for many of like many of Thank my you. friends from my class. Uh, I highly relate to the first question, uh, first answer which, which you said that I was pretty much confused because most of us is little dicey about it. But uh, it was a really insightful session and I relate uh, very much to it. Thank you. Uh, with camera person, Khush Advani, I am Radhika Sakale. Keep watching Lake City Live.